Welcome back to Mason Talks. So the Cleveland Browns have made a lot of interesting moves this offseason through the means of free agency and, of course, the NFL draft. But today, I want to look at three offseason moves by Andrew Barry and the Browns that I believe particularly could be the defining moments of the Cleveland Browns offseason. And by that, I mean that these three additions could be the three players who could make the biggest difference for the Browns in 2021. Now, let's start with number three. And I really do believe that this was an important signing, although it might not be the flashiest player in the world, and that is wide receiver Rashard Higgins. Now, the retaining of Rashard Higgins has become basically an annual event for the Cleveland Browns because the Browns continue to sign him to short-term contracts that don't necessarily guarantee him much of a lengthy time with the Cleveland Browns. But he keeps making it work, and he keeps extending his time here, and he keeps getting new contract offers from multiple different regimes. And I really do think that Rashard Higgins is an important player for the Browns. And I think that signing him is an important sign that the Browns are giving to the rest of the the rest of their players. Because I think that re-signing Higgins shows you two things in particular. Number one, it shows you that no matter what position you're in or no matter what you know, regime you're drafted by, what GM drafted you, and no matter what has happened in your past with the team, if you work hard and put results on the field, you will continue to get rewarded financially. You will continue to be given contracts. Because Rashard Higgins has not necessarily had the easiest career with the Cleveland Browns. He was drafted in 2016. He, of course, I, I believe that was the Sashi Brown-led Cleveland Browns. He was not good, early, not good early on in his career, not very productive. He ended up getting cut by the Browns at some point. And then after making things work with Baker Mayfield in 2018, he got another contract from John Dorsey. And although he fell off again in 2019, the Browns still felt him worthy to retain on the team. And now after yet another successful 2020 showing, Higgins is back again. I think that this move shows to everybody in the league and everybody on this team that if you work hard, you will get a contract from the Cleveland Browns. It is that simple. And then the second thing that I think it shows is that the Browns are 100% committed to the success of Baker Mayfield. Now, the Browns didn't necessarily need Higgins because of his talent. I mean... The Browns already have an extremely talented group of wide receivers. You have guys like Odell Beckham Jr., you have guys like Jarvis Landry, Donovan Peoples-Jones, who showed very good things in his rookie season. The Browns didn't sign Higgins specifically because of his talent. The Browns signed him because they know that he can work well with Baker Mayfield. They know that he has that chemistry with Baker Mayfield. They know that Higgins is one of Baker's guys. And I think that the Browns value that because they value Baker Mayfield. They want him to be successful. They want to do whatever it is they can to make him successful, whether it be giving him a new coaching staff like they did with Kevin Stefanski and crew, whether it be giving him a, you know, top of the line offensive line, which they did last offseason, or whether it simply be by re-signing and paying the guys who Baker likes, such as Richard Higgins. The Browns are committed to Baker Mayfield. They are committed to his success, and the signing of Higgins shows that. I think that Richard Higgins is going to continue to contribute for this Browns team, and because of that, I think that Rashard Higgins is one of the three defining moments of the Browns offseason. Now, the second defining moment is one of more emphasis and definitely more excitement, and that was the signing in free agency of safety John Johnson III. Now, the Browns' safeties in 2020 were mediocre at best. I mean, I think that more often than not last year, they were terrible. Ronnie Harrison was good when he was healthy and when he was on the field, but we were scarred far too frequently by the 
lackadaisical play of players such as Sheldrick Redwine and Andrew Sandejo. And just quite frankly, the Browns' deep ball defense was weak because their safety core was weak. And coming into this offseason, Andrew Barry was aware of that. He knew that safeties were one of the Browns' biggest needs on their entire roster. And so what the Browns did early was they went out in free agency and they committed pretty you know, good money to bring in John Johnson, who is one of the best safeties in the National Football League. I think that the signing of John Johnson could be a pivotal moment of this offseason because if it works out well and if his talent is able to contribute in a big way to the Browns defense, it could take that defense up from the, you know, average to below average level it played at last year and elevate it to a much, much better level. John Johnson could make the Browns pass defense at a level within which you are comfortable with your defense being on the field in postseason play. And that's a big thing for the Cleveland Browns because obviously last year, like we saw when Patrick Mahomes was on the field in that Chiefs divisional round game, the Browns defense just wasn't really up to the task. But the addition of John Johnson makes them much closer, especially if he kind of plays out in in a big way. So that's why he's the second defining move of the Browns offseason. And now this is the number one move. And quite frankly, I think this will be what really makes or breaks the Browns defense this year. And that is the signing of Jadavian Clowney. Now, Jadavian Clowney was not a top pass rusher of this free agent class. He, He was not one of the names on the top of most people's lists. But I think that Jadavian Clowney was a smart signing by Andrew Barry and the Browns. And when we look back at Jadavion Clowney, if he is able to reach his potential with the Cleveland Browns, it could make this defense not only good, but great. Uh, my, My view of it is that if you have good secondary players, which I think the Browns do have at least capable players in their secondary with names like Denzel Ward, Troy Hill, John Johnson, who we previously talked about. Now you add Greg Newsom to the to the group. I think the Browns are going to have a good secondary. And if you have that and you mix it with a dominant pass rush, that could be a, a top 10 defense in the National Football League. That could be a Super Bowl level defense. And I think that if Jadavion Clowney is able to reach his potential, the potential that got him drafted first overall back in 2014, I believe it was, then the Browns' defense will be elevated from good to great. That will give them a dominating pass rush. You already have Miles Garrett, and of course, Miles Garrett is going to be a defensive player of the year candidate. That's just the level he plays at. That is going to be Miles Garrett for the rest of his career. He's going to be one of those Aaron Donald type defensive linemen who is just always, always in the running for defensive player of the year. But there's room for Miles Garrett to get better, and there's room for the Browns to maximize that potential further. And the way to do that is to give him a legitimate pass rushing buddy, which the Browns haven't had. We really haven't had a second defensive end who can get anywhere near the level of Miles Garrett. When Olivier Vernon was healthy and at his best, he still was nowhere near the level of Miles Garrett. He just it, he was never up up to that type of play. But if Jadavion Clowney can get back to the potential that he had with the Houston Texans, which is a big question mark because he was terrible with Tennessee last year before suffering injury. But if Clowney can get back to being that dominant pass rusher and dominant run stopper, this one year trial that the Browns have signed him to could be the defining move of the entire Cleveland Browns offseason because that move could be what flips their defense into a legitimate Super Bowl level defense. So those are my three defining moves of the Browns offseason. The signing of Rashard Higgins, the signing of John Johnson, and the signing of Jadavion Clowney. Now, a couple of players who got left off the list, Greg Newsome, 
the first round pick of the Browns. And the main reason why I didn't throw Greg Newsom into this is because if Greg Newsom flops in his rookie year, I don't think it's going to be the end all be all for the Cleveland Browns because you still have Denzel Ward, you have Troy Hill, you have Greedy Williams, you have other names there who can recoup if that were to happen. If you have, say, uh, Jeremiah Usukoromora, another big draftee by the Cleveland Browns, if, if, if JOK flops, it's not going to be the end of the world because you have, you know, Anthony Walker, Malcolm Smith, uh, Sione Takitaki, you have other capable players at that position. I think when you look at John Johnson, if he flops, your safeties are terrible. If Jadavian Clowney flops, y- y- your pass rush outside of Miles Garrett will probably be terrible. Rashard Higgins is the exception to that. But really, I think that those are the three defining moves of the Browns offseason. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of my list and what would your list be? What do you think are the three defining moves of this Browns offseason? Thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show. I'll see you in my next episode. Goodbye.